Good morning, Tucson. This is God's Random Act of Kindness show. Uh, this morning is going to be cool. I think you're going to really like this study. Um, this is certainly someone a study that everyone can relate to. And uh, it's the study of your broken heart. Um, does, it sounds a little sad, but it isn't. God, the Bible is full of encouragement for folks uh, that have gone through um, experiences in their life that have made their hearts feel broken. And, and so what God's really trying to do is he's trying to offer you some comfort through the scriptures. So uh, get out your Bible and uh, your pad and, and pen and, and don't forget to journal because God's working in your lives and he's helping you to, uh, to grow and change. And so um, the scriptures today are going to be great. So uh, we're going to have um, – so go ahead and get ready to write them down all, so that you can write them all down and uh, then we can um, review them and then – and, and then share them with each other, and then you can go back and, and reread them over and over again, and and you'll receive additional comfort after the lesson. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Tucson. This is God's Random Act of Kindness show. We're we're uh, broadcasting from Tucson, Arizona, and this is the Marshall. And uh, so, uh, get ready for your scriptures now. You have your your pen ready. Um, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah um, chapter fifteen, verse nineteen. Um, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. We'll be looking at Romans chapter 15, verse 4. And then um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 through 11. And then we'll finish up with uh, Revelations chapters 21, um, uh, verses 3 through 4. So yeah, we're going to look at some really great scriptures this morning. We're going to, it's always good to be um, to be counseled by the Bible rather than people talking, and um, we're we're committed to sharing the Bible with you and helping you to learn how to uh, flip around better and get to know it so you can share it with others. So, good morning, Tucson uh, listeners here in Tucson and everywhere. Um, uh, <laughs> the thought is this: Have you ever noticed that when you um, when you decide to follow God and uh, and you try to be obedient to Him that uh, trouble and heartache uh, um, just increased, and you're like, "What?" Well, it does happen, and um, and so I encourage you to seek your comfort through the scriptures. Sometimes it 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 it, it just doesn't seem to make any sense and why that happens, but God has this bigger picture for everybody, and and He's trying to uh, He's trying to grow us, and so um, don't. Uh, don't resist because uh, through those struggles and those tough times, it, it, it shows um, where you're at and, and, and where you can go and, and how you can have a stronger faith after you get through it. And then that's why we journal because we look back at those experiences and we can gain strength from them when we have – it just seems like our whole life will be like that. So don't be surprised when um, you have heartache because heartache will uh, – will help lead you to a dependency on, on God rather than uh, on your own um, thoughts that you can do anything on your own if you're just a good person or something, that kind of stuff. So anyways, so uh, this morning we've spent time in prayer. We had our Bible out. We, I've shared before on how I pray, and, and so I try to open my heart and my soul and my mind to God's words, and, and he just said he wanted to talk about brokenheartedness. And so I thought that was a really cool topic. So that's why I think you guys are going to love this morning. Um, it's not sad at all. It's, it's God is full of, of comfort and encouragement. And that's what this show is all about. So uh, let's move on here. Um, so the sufferings of brokenness, um, the, the trials that you've been experiencing are all part of this breaking process. Uh, much like the breaking of a, of a wild horse. Um, have you ever uh, saw someone break a horse before? Uh, you know, they resist at first and they try and throw you and then, and then you, they get mad and then, and, 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 you know, and they're just uh, this, uh, you know, totally not wanting to do what you are asking them to do when you're trying to help them um, to become better than they are. And uh, so um, what eventually happens is the horse does break and accepts the rider as um, as, as guidance in, in their lives, and so so um, the rider and the horse uh, can can work together in harmony with each other. Um, very much like what this lesson's all about, what God's trying to teach through this lesson this morning. 
And um, let's continue. Uh, brokenness is God's requirement for maximum usefulness. Oh, let's say that again. Brokenness is God's requirement for maximum usefulness. And so that gives you the idea that God wants to use us. So let's go to the first um, scripture uh, in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 19. But before we do that, let's pray, everyone, because, you know, let's, let's invite God and the Holy Spirit to be part of this study so that we can open our minds and hearts and, and that we can, um, you know, retain what we've learned this morning. And so... Good morning, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to be here to to seek you, to have the um, desire to get to know you better. Uh, it, it's so exciting to to speak with you, Father, to learn from your scriptures, and to um, you know make efforts to apply those into our lives so that we can actually become useful. And uh, we do want to be useful for you, God. So thank you again for for calling us to be your children, and uh, we love you so so much, and we love you, Jesus. You're we recognize you as our Savior, and we, we, we pray that we can be more like you in the example you gave us in the Bible every day. And then, um, and then someday when we come home, we pray that we'll be pleasing to you. We love you, God. Love you, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, thanks for having our backs. Thanks for praying for us. Thanks for being our advocate, our friend, our, our, um, uh, our helper uh, through this uh, through this world that um, we know can be quite uh, quite broken. So we offer up this brokenness to you, and we pray that we can turn our, our broken hearts into um, hearts that it will be healed by your grace and your love, Jesus. We know that you're the great heart uh, fixer. So uh, for everyone listening that has a broken heart, um, I, I pray that you'll lay it down and, and offer it to Jesus to help you uh, to be healed and, and to understand that uh, life sufferings, if they're looked at in the right uh, perspective, they can be um, ways of becoming uh, um, less dependent on yourself and, and dependent on God and, and, and healed and, 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 and in harmony with his will for our lives. So good morning, uh, Father God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to scripture. So the scripture is Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 19. So let's flip around. Um, you'll find Jeremiah in, in, in the Old Testament, and it's going to be um, after Psalms, after Isaiah, and then you'll you'll come up with Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a great prophet, and so uh, that's a little backstory on him. But uh, chapter fifteen will, and, and verse nineteen will. Okay, we just got to find it ourselves here, and it'll. Um, here we go. Okay. So the Lord is actually responding, and, and, and he says, If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good works rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. Um, you, you must influence them. Do not let them influence you. Uh, they will fight against you like an attacking army. But I will make you a secure as a, a as a fortified wall of bronze. Then, uh, th no, they will not conquer you, for I am with you to protect you and rescue you. I, I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, I certainly keep you safe from these wicked men. I will rescue you from their cruel hands. So, um, I believe the Lord uh, chose this. Uh, oops, was this? Yeah, chose the scripture to to show us that in our brokenness, in our in our in our um how do how are we ever going to get through this that he he's giving us confidence and 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 belief and and we've got to have confidence in God because without it uh, we have no faith and so without faith we just aren't going to be able to be close to God and be able to uh enact all the the great tools that God's given us to be stronger uh, followers of him so he wants to grow us and so just like the horse that needs to be broken so that he can become a useful tool for uh, for its rider um, where we want to be a useful tool for God and help um, introduce other people to to uh, learn about his uh, beautiful um, insights in the scriptures and and what he wants for us and his will and, and we and in turn we learn how to live our lives with purpose and meaning so anyways that's the beginning of our uh, of our study this morning so uh, stay tuned uh, we're working it up for the for the folks and uh, and we'll we'll um, 
I look forward to sharing this message of, uh, of um, our broken hearts. Good morning, Tucson. All right, Tucson, let's continue. Um, oh, God inspired me in Jeremiah to add just a little bit to that um, that last uh, teaching. Um, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not abandoned by the heat or, or, or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. I encourage you to reread that over and over again. That is exactly how we want to um, we want to act during s- struggle, and know that um, we want to plant our roots deep, and 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 uh, and that's what God's trying to deepen His love. So, uh, but go ahead and read that for yourself. Now let's go to um, well Acts chapter nine for thirty one. I encourage you to go to that yourself. Um, it's really just uh, talking about how. God saves Saul and uh, from murder, and, and he's going to be there for you. And, and uh, so, the uh, all the struggles that we go through, if we look to God, he'll he'll guide us through um, through those tough times. And then, but we want to go to actually to Romans chapter fifteen, verse. We're going to start with verse five instead of four. God inspired me to do that. So, uh, reading in the NLT in in Romans. Which is in the new, it's in the New Testament, and you'll find that after uh, Jeremiah and after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and and then you'll you'll catch up with Romans, and uh, that was a book that was written by Paul. So um, let's go ahead and look at chapter fifteen, verse five. Uh, May God, who who gives you this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other, uh, as it's fitting for the followers of Jesus Christ. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Now remember, Jesus came to earth to bring you closer to God in heaven. So his whole goal was to introduce the Father and, and to give you um, this guidance on how to, how to conduct your lives that will be pleasing to him. And, and, and he always put everything to the, to the Father in heaven. So um, Jesus was 100% uh, focused on our Lord in heaven and, and bringing his children uh, to him in a way that they can uh, be pleasing uh, presentations when they pass and that they'll, they'll be these great followers and, and, and um, these great children when we, they finally come, when we all finally go back to be with him in, in heaven or on earth or wherever God's plan is for us. Um, we're going to uh, be more ready, and that's why we want to grow our faith while we're here on earth, um, because through these struggles, through these broken hearts, we're going to um, develop this endurance and this strength that we, and this reliance on God rather than our own self, um, what would be the word, uh, self-belief uh, that we're the ones fixing everything with our own efforts. Um, when we finally uh, become dependent and understanding that on that type of dependency that we need, um, God seems to uh, take us and, and, and work with our hearts better. Um, the trials don't stop, but they seem to be uh, more um, able to endure because we have these uh, this inner faith that's stronger, that uh, is faith-based and endurance-based and, and dependently based on uh, believing that our, our Father's got things handled, and, and so, and He does, so that you can take comfort in this morning if you're going through heartache. Everyone, um, turn to God, and He'll He'll give you the strength you need to 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 put one foot in front of the other and keep on going. So, uh, so we're looking at Romans uh, chapter fifteen, verses five, and and as uh, so, let's reiterate it. Uh, may God who gives us the patience and the encouragement, um, help you live in complete harmony with each other as it's fitting for the followers of Jesus Christ. So, And then he encourages later in the scriptures to to sing and praise him. And and, uh, and if you also kind of get the idea, working in harmony, that, that fits our analogy of the uh, horse rider uh, and the horse being taught how to um, to uh, live in harmony with with. with uh, with its guidance teacher, its writer. So uh, 
I hope you um, enjoy that analogy. So uh, let's continue on. Tucson, there's, there's still more to talk about. Okay, well, let's, let's offer up some comfort. Um, in the scriptures, we, we, we had written down some scriptures that we'd be going to today. We're going to go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. God offers, God offers comfort to all. So in verse 3, it starts with, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Um, let's pop out a scripture for a second. Uh, that does seem to be, uh, uh, we don't just go through these struggles, these trials for ourselves. It does seem that God allows this to happen so that we can have a greater empathy, a greater compassion for a person going through it. And when isn't it nice to speak to someone who's been through something rather than just someone trying to, you know, shoot from the side of the hip how to help you um, when they have real life experiences where they drew um, their uh, answer out through the scriptures and through God's help. And then they went through a similar circumstance. They always seem to be like so much of a better listener and and um, so much more compassionate in their guidance. And uh, and it helps the person listening um, to believe in them as well, that uh, that what they're saying is, is, is centered in God's will and his scripture and centered in life experience rather than just, um, you know, judged and made up real quick to help you. So, yes, that's a good thing. So let's pop back into scripture um, or we'll re reiterate just a little bit of what the comfort is God is saying. So back to three again. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and, and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. And uh, so um, popping down to verse five, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with our troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then, then you can patiently endure the same things we'd suffer. Uh, we are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. So, you know, Paul is actually just talking about how God is there for you. And then um, he's assuring you that he'll be there for you as well as he has been for them. So uh, this has been a great study, don't you think, Tucson and, and listeners everywhere? It's, uh, it's, 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 a, um, it's not just about a broken heart. It's about God's comfort and, and how exciting that is. So we're going to finish with uh, Revelations chapter 21. And we all know where that book is. It's the last book of the Bible. And uh, we're going to go to chapter 21 and verses 3 through 4. Um, God had inspired me to share that with you. So let's do this. Um, uh, in the NLT chapter 21, uh, in verses three and four read, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is, is among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will no longer, there will be no more death or sorrow, or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. Oh, guys, that, I mean, that actually had come to me earlier today, this scripture, and I didn't realize that was what we were going to share. And then, um, but um, you can take great comfort in that, that all things are gone forever, like um, all the, your sorrow, and your pain, and your crying, and uh, your brokenheartedness because God is now living with us. And uh, that's the promise of our future. It's a pretty good promise. Good morning, Tucson. I hope you enjoyed this message. And um, I, I hope that uh, God is speaking to your heart. And please reread the scriptures so that you can interpret for yourselves what uh, God's talking about uh, and how he's trying to comfort you in your lives. And if you're going through brokenheartedness or any type of trial that uh, is struggling, um, you can... Uh, you can certainly get comfort through the uh, the teaching that we shared with you this morning. Good morning, Tucson. God bless everybody and everybody's family. 
and may you have um, a wonderful day.